Let's bring in Kevin McMonagall. He's a law professor at Kate Western University, Reserve University. Good to have you on, sir. For, first to the defense's request here Hi. that Trump, Trump be able to respond to Stormy Daniels' testimony. We should note, I suppose he could go on the stand to do so. Does not believe, it does not appear that's what they're asking to do here, to respond under oath. He wants to tweet about it and talk about it. Judge denied it. Is that the right call? I think that is the right call. I mean, he has the, the, her testimony takes place under oath in trial, and he has the right to call other witnesses in the defense or, or to take the stand himself. The way to do it is not uh, by tweeting or do, right. do, going on uh, media. It's it should be answered in the courtroom because it's it's up to the jury, and the jurors won't be watching the tweets, hopefully. <laughs> Another moment beyond Stormy Daniels' testimony from just the last hour was uh, speaking to someone who worked in the White House for then President Trump, who noted the timing of this, and the timing, as I understand it, is key to the prosecutor's case, that after the Access Hollywood tape came out, when they were then concerned that the Stormy Daniels alleged affair would come out, and that leads to the motive, according to prosecutors, for this payment, this hush money, she noted that the RNC at the time, as she remembered it, the staffer of Trump, was thinking about dumping Trump from the ticket. I, I wonder how that fits into the broader case, how significantly in terms of establishing intent for the hush money payment. Well, uh, obviously, if he is damaged by a, a, a scandalous story, that makes it more likely that they might want to dump him as the candidate. So that, I think, uh, reinforces his motive to be paying. Understood. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. Uh, we also learned that they will not be calling Karen McDougal to the stand, who, of course, is another woman who alleged an affair with Donald Trump. I, I wonder if you're surprised yeah. by that a and if it could be at all related to this, the, the separate finding in a totally different case, the dismissal of the, um, or the reversal, I should say, of the Harvey Weinstein case in which other unrelated allegations were brought in to establish a pattern of behavior, if this might be a reaction to that, that, that the prosecutors feel if they bring an outside case, that that could damage rather than strengthen their case. Well, this is actually very different than the Harvey Weinstein case. If Donald Trump was charged with sexual assault uh, and Stormy Daniels was the alleged victim, then to bring in Karen McDougal, which is showing other wrongful conduct, it would be a Harvey Weinstein issue. But I don't see that uh, here. It's very different. Uh, the Karen McDougal would have just be talking about a similar hush money payment, which reinforces that he's interested in, you know, having this information get uh, silenced, basically. Understood. So I don't see it as being close anywhere near what the Harvey Weinstein case uh, was about. Okay, so be in that. But before we go on Stormy Daniels' testimony, and particularly the cross-examination, which went on for some time, hours really, and was at times yeah. Contentious, and I understand a defense attorney's right and an and understandable strategy to question the credibility of a prosecution witness here. But but do you feel that that cross examination went too far? Well, it depends on uh, what their objective is. Uh, what I think what the defense will try and do is make it look as if the def prosecution's case rests on Stormy Daniels' testimony and that for various reasons she shouldn't be believed. Bias, her pri prior contradiction, her prior lies. Uh, but uh, that, so that often happens when you have a cooperating witness. The defense will say, the entire case rests on this person's testimony, and how can you possibly accept her testimony when there's bias, contradiction, and those sorts of things. What the uh, prosecution will say is, well, Stormy Daniels isn't the key to our case. Uh, we have lots and lots of other witnesses, documents. We we could have won this case without even calling her. Mm. Uh, so she isn't uh, the the key to the case. So that's part. I think what the length of cross examination is by is trying to get across to the jury how that the defense says, oh, Stormy Daniels is central to the case, and uh, that's not actually the, the the case. On the defense, the prosecution will 
try and fight that by arguing for with about all the corroboration there is. So that uh, the idea that uh, the Stormy Daniels testimony is kind of like icing on the cake rather than mm -hmm. the foundation of the case. Does that make sense? It does make sense. Uh, and I'm sure it's not the last time we talk about it as we get closer to the end of the prosecution's case. Professor Kevin yeah. McMonagall, thanks so much for joining. Sure. Nice to see you. Bye bye.